Now another disease to worry about in our dogs, leptospirosis. It's an infectious bacterial disease that can damage your dog's kidneys. Recently there's been outbreaks even in the area where I live. Should you be giving your dog the lepto vaccine? Are you looking to learn more about natural pet health and wellness? You've come to the right place. Click the link to subscribe to Veterinary Secrets. There's been an outbreak in the area where I live, dogs getting this disease, leptospirosis. Many of these dogs, they can get clinically really sick, showing signs of kidney failure. It's a disease which appears to be on the rise. Typically is more thought of being a tropical type disease, and we're increasingly seeing it even in the urban areas. But you need to go out and panic, rush into your veterinarian, get a lepto vaccine. Leptospira, these are spiral shaped bacteria called spirochetes. There are about 10 different serovars or subtypes which can affect our pets. For the vaccine, it only includes a maximum for these serovars. So where is your pet at highest risk of contracting leptospirosis? You're thinking of stagnant water. You know, there's bodies of water, this really aren't moving, they're just sitting there. But after the water clears, the soil can be contaminated for several months. And what is the source of infection? It's the urine from wild animals. Common ones include raccoons, rats. These animals, they have leptospirosis, they're shedding it in their urine. Their urine is then contaminating the water and that's what's contaminating the soil. We're seeing increased populations of some of these animals such as more raccoons, more rats especially in many of the cities. Hence that's thought to be the primary cause of these outbreaks. Most commonly the bacteria are transmitting to your dog through damaged skin, through an infected cut. For instance, your dog might have a small cut in his leg. He's standing in that stagnant water. The bacteria can transmit that way. They could get it by eating a rat that was infected with leptospirosis. In general, dog is not just getting it by walking around outside, going to the bathroom. There has to be water or something where the bacteria is floating in in the first place. Your dog has to have some type of wound so the bacteria can enter that wound and then cause leptospirosis. Initially after infection, the organism is going to spread through the bloodstream. Then after that seven day incubation period, you can see fever, abnormal bleeding, tissue bruising, tissue edema or swelling. After about two weeks, they're now multiplying within the kidneys and they've damaged the kidneys. At this stage, your dog is going to be clinically sick. Here she's likely not eating much, she's lethargic, likely has increased drinking, increased urination. Leptospirosis, it can also affect the liver, so your dog may be yellow or jaundiced. It can even affect the eyes, so there might be inflammation within the eye, known as uveitis. It's the young dogs less than one year of age that get the most severe form of leptospirosis. And over 90% of dogs, they have measurable changes on their blood work showing that their kidney is affected. It's called azotemia, meaning they've elevated urea, elevated creatinine. They're going to have decreased urine specific gravity, increased drinking, increased urination. There's a number of specific veterinary tests. Now there are new in-house diagnostic testing kits and they tell you pretty quick whether your dog is infected with leptospirosis or not. Fortunately, most dogs do respond to treatment. 80 to 90% respond to a common antibiotic, one called doxycycline and or amoxicillin. The leptospires, they're cleared from the blood within about 24 hours after starting the antibiotic, but your dog can still be shedding in the urine for at least another seven days. Because it's a zoonotic disease, meaning you could get leptospirosis from your dog, then you want to be extra cautious. You're wearing gloves. You're going to be spraying down with some type of iodine solution any of the areas where your dog has been urinating, for example. Many dogs require additional treatment, such as IV fluids. You know, to normalize those kidney values, flush the kidneys. The current vaccines, they cover four serovars, but up to 10 different serovars or subtypes can affect our dogs. The companies claim the vaccines are very effective, yet they do report a higher incidence of side effects, such as post-vaccine fever, swelling, joint and muscle pain, even autoimmune disease. Many people reported a higher than above average incidence of side effects with a lepto vaccine. Leptospirosis worldwide is a pretty significant human disease, yet to date there is no vaccine that is considered safe for people. So it's okay to be giving our dog the lepto vaccine, but not us. Another important point with the vaccine, it will decrease the severity of the disease if you vaccinate it against for the actual serovar that is infecting your dog but it won't prevent your dog from becoming a carrier. He can still be shedding those leptospires in his urine. So knowing all that, knowing there's an outbreak in my area, you know, what do I suggest? Well, number one, let's just start with prevention. Just make sure there aren't obvious bodies of standing water just around your house where your dog is regularly hanging out. Number two, if you've got a problem with rodents, i.e. rats, 
perhaps try and manage that. If your dog is spending most of his time in an area where there really isn't standing water, you don't have wild animals urinating into a little pool, you don't have potentially other infected dogs urinating in one small area, then it's pretty minimal chance that your dog is ever gonna get exposed to leptospirosis. But if your dog park has a little manky pond, for instance, and you've got a whole bunch of dogs running in out and swimming in that, there's not a lot of moving water, hmm, well then there's a higher risk. And then think about how dogs are getting up with spirosis in the first place. Typically there's gonna be some type of damage, a wound or something on your dog's skin for the leptospires to penetrate in through the skin in the first place. So if your dog has a wound on his body, don't let him go in swimming in that stagnant body of water. What about the vaccine? You need to be balancing risk versus reward. The area where I'm living, where I'm walking Tula, there is no standing water. We're in winter. She's gonna have minimal exposure. But if you live in an area where there's a big rodent population, there is a big raccoon population, there is a fair amount of standing water. Or you have a dog. In every single little pond, if you've got a lab, maybe he's got an ongoing skin condition, already he's gonna have some type of open wound. You may wanna be considering it. I personally would be really cautious of this vaccine, would not be giving this to Tula. And if your dog ever shows any of those acute clinical signs, you know, such as fever, increased drinking, increased urination, lethargy, depression, decreased appetite, then see your veterinarian as soon as possible, have them do the blood test, and then getting your dog on the appropriate antibiotic if needed. Is this a disease to worry about? I say yes. Should you be rushing off and giving your dog a vaccine for lepto? In most cases, no. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets on this leptospirosis outbreak update. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.